still, as a follower of Jesus, I'm still to be marked by love. Yeah. David kind of gave us a glimpse of that. He said, you know, I'm never going to give anything to God that isn't of value. There probably are people who would love for God to speak to them. But are you ready to hear what he has to say? I mean, like, I physically had to say, okay, you know, and, and open yeah. up my hands and say, what, what do you want to do, do here? Welcome back for another episode of Radio Reflections. My name is Josh Harma, one of the pastors at Radio Life Church in Sturgis, Michigan, and I am joined once again by my co-host, Pastor Josh Brown. Yep, worship arts pastor. I get to hang on the podcast sometimes. Most of the time, I'm on the other side running gadgets. Which I was actually, I was thinking about that not too long ago. I was like, yeah. we ought to figure out some way. Maybe we steal like an action cam from the worship center. Because mm. I, I, like I've, I watch the podcast, right? Sure. I'm, I do like, I don't know, I think, I think we do yeah. a quality control. Job. And yeah. I, I watch it, like, hey, yeah. you know, I watch to say, did we communicate the things that we were hoping to communicate? Sure. You know? Um, yeah. And every time, you're speaking. I'm like, man, I wish we could see JB. Mm. So we got to figure out some way to get yeah. you on there. So when, when, you're, can, when you're pitching in. And we can do that. It was, it's like, um, I can't remember her name on the Howard Stern show. Um, well, remember? Robin. Robin, was, that's yeah, it. Yeah. You remember. <laughs> Good for you, man. Yeah, I'm basically the Robin of, of uh, Radiant Reflections. Yeah. There you go. Off, off site. He was mostly. just. Off scene. He was an interesting dude, man. He, he is. Like, I mean, yeah, he, he made. I, I remember, I actually watched, I, I don't recommend this, right? No. <laughs> but I watched, I watched, because he did his, that movie, what was it, like, Private Parts or something like that? He did a movie. It was oh, kind of his, seen that. in a sense, like an autobiographical So movie. probably super vulgar. So it was terrible. Like, yeah. don't watch it. Uh, <laughs> but in there, it talks about how when he started his show, like, they would, they would interview people, and, then, and the people that loved it would say, I keep listening because I, I, I have no idea what he's going to do He next. was the original shock jock. Yeah. The original. Like, yeah. He and, would do things. <laughs> but then they talked to the people that hated the show. Yeah. And they would say, well, I keep listening because I don't yeah. know what he's going to do next. Solid marketing. <laughs> so we're going to start doing really weird. Th- no. That's no. right. Today we're going to talk about no. watermelon. No, we're not. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know. I don't even know how to be crazy. Yeah. Because he was... He was out there. He was always over that line. <laughs> and then, and then he becomes a judge on that one, like TV oh, talent like show. Oh, like a singing show. I'm no. like, I'm yeah, like, yeah. who thought that it would be a good idea yeah. to have him, like, tell little kids whether or not they were a good yeah. singer? You know, like this is just yeah. this is weird. I don't yeah. know. And I don't know how did we, I, how did we even start? Oh, because I'm off screen and I said Robin. Oh, you yeah, remembered yeah, yeah. Robin. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So a little derailment there. We're so, back. <laughs> Here we go. So we are continuing our conversation today, uh, looking at a biblical stance on same sex. I, I say activities again, and there's just there's not a good because I don't want to say issues because this isn't just an issue, right? And this is where again mm-hmm. we we plead ignorance. Uh, if the way we bumble through this yeah. is offensive, uh, we our, our intent is not to demean yeah. uh, people. So please uh, just be gracious with us and, and forgive us if we yeah. are total doofuses in our choice of words. Uh, it's, it's not intentional. It is, again, largely uh, due to an ever-evolving uh, dictionary of what terms mean. Culture has changed. But, yeah. yeah, culture's changed. And we, like we said in the first episode, we are two heterosexual guys, <laughs> married, have kids, uh, and so we're, we're doing our best to see the LGBTQ plus community through the eyes of Jesus and speak in a loving way, in a truthful way, and present the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone, yes. regardless of your, your sexual uh, uh, attraction. It's, it's, Jesus doesn't care where you are when he finds you. Uh, he just wants a relationship with you. Yeah, yeah. So in our last episode, episode 69, we talked about a couple of Old Testament passages that deal with uh, this topic. Right? We looked at uh, Genesis 19.5, we looked at Leviticus 18.22, and we looked at Leviticus 20.13. Uh, we did a little bit of a breakdown of, well, hey, well, does the Leviticus you know, passage, do those still apply today? Uh, we talked about that. If you didn't catch episode 69, stop this one, go back and watch that, yeah. uh, and we'll continue to build on kind of those themes here today as we look at Newer Testament 
passages. Because you, know, you could say, well, hey, uh, even if you, if you don't believe us, right, in, right. in how we handled the Leviticus passages, you say, those don't apply. That's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. That has yeah. nothing to do with me. Um, right. Well, so then the question is, well, does the Newer Testament have anything to say about this? Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. um, Romans 1. And I'll have you read it in yours, and then I'll read it in mine. Because, again, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like a, sometimes I get teased. I love, I'm a, I consider myself a simple person, right? I, I like the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. My brain uh, doesn't have the processing power to uh, get fancy. So I like, I like things stripped down and simple. Mm -hmm. um, like I said last time, JB's smarter than me. And some of it, is, some of it is too, is I, I think there's a, there's a level of familiarity. I came right? up, I was just about to say, the only reason I use New King James, and I continue to use, I went through Bible college with New King James. You know, uh, I got saved. This is the Bible I've had for, I've had it rebound twice. Nice. But I have owned this Bible for 22 years. It's been through school and everything. So it is totally familiarity. I like the message, mm. which is even more simplified than the New Living Translation. So, which, I mean, the message, just be, I mean, that would be uh, transliteration. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not a translation of scripture, yeah. it's a paraphrase. There, there, are some, there are some good things in there. Same thing yeah. with like uh, the Passion Translation. Yeah. That's technically more of a paraphrase yeah. than it is an actual linguistic translation, translation. Of, of, of scripture. Yeah. Uh, but if it helps you engage with God's word, and as long as they're not like <laughs> spewing heresy, right. uh, they can be a helpful yeah. tool in addition to, uh, you know, like a, a real translation, yeah. yep. I would say. But, okay, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah. And read, read Romans 1. So uh, Romans 1, uh, it's Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. All right, I'm going to read, and I'm going to back up a little bit. I think for this reason we should, because yeah. it says, so yeah. That is why. Mm -hmm. I'm going to actually start reading in verse 18. I'm going to go, I'll just start mm -hmm. at kind of that section. It says, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yes, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. And instead of worshiping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why, and this is where, you know, J.B. had started reading. For this reason. That is why, or for this reason, God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, burned with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men, and as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. So it's this, it's this idea that you know, people know about God and reject him, and then, in a sense... It's one of those things where it's not always a good thing when God lets us have what we want. You know, no. <laughs> a lot of times uh, it's the grace of God that we don't always yeah. get what we want because yeah. we want some messed up things sometimes. So, yeah. But so this is a passage, right? Where and this is a, an interesting passage because the Leviticus passages, you know, and some people say, well, it's all just the patriarchy. It's all about men. Da 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 da. -da. You know, Paul here addresses mm -hmm. women in same-sex mm -hmm. relationships mm -hmm. um, and says that's not 
within God's design. He uses this idea of nature and that, that this is something that goes against nature. Now, where people might get a little bit like, eh, but, but what about the whole idea that, that people with same-sex attraction, they're born this way? Mm -hmm. Isn't that then natural? And some objections to this passage, people would say, well, well, that isn't about people that are, uh, that are born with that same-sex attraction. This is heterosexual or straight people mm -hmm. who go against that. Their natural tendency they, towards heterosexual. They go heterosexual. against their natural tendency towards mm -hmm. heterosexual and engage mm -hmm. in, in same-sex activity. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the problem with that is it doesn't actually, it doesn't say that. <laughs> There's the some text. assumptions being made to the text. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's where, like, you know, you'll read, uh, you know, in the last episode I, I referenced uh, an affirming viewpoint book, uh, God and the Gay Christian by Matthew Vines. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's, that's one of his objections to the Romans passage. He says, well, yeah, but like, that, isn't, right. that doesn't mean people who have that you know, natural you know, bent towards same sex. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, but you're, you're having to force scripture through your view then, yeah. uh, if, if that's the way you want to take it, because it doesn't give us that out. Right. If that makes sense. Um, so is this text relevant? I think it's very relevant. Very relevant. Very relevant. And I think it's amazing that the text starts with the root cause and the foundation uh, for this, which is a rejection of the authority of God over people and the worship of other things. Right. It could be self. And this is a longer conversation. And I love how Preston Sprinkle again in, in Grace 2.0 he, he attacks this way back to creation mm. and begins looking at what Romans 1 refers to as nature, what is natural, referring back to God's original intent at creation, the original intention of sexual intimacy, which we know is procreative, right? We know science and biology shows us that gay sex does not produce offspring, doesn't make children. So uh, we know that this text is actually referring back to God's original intent for sexual activity in the garden, which is offspring, which is the blessing of children, which is um, teaching children the ways of God. And, and there's the family unit there, there. There's a lot of things. And all of that spins out when you reject God as creator, as authority over your life. This is just one expression of what idolatry does. It's just one expression. So no. I, I believe it's very, this is very plain. And I like, Josh, that you mentioned that it, it does identify not just um, men with men, but lesbian relationships, sexual relationships right. as well. Right. Um, so then, uh, again, scope of the verse, again, we kind of hit on that already. Now, I will say one of the objections here, um, people will say, well, yeah, if you look at the ancient world, uh, and they actually, this would be applied to the Old Testament passages, and that's, that's, my fault we didn't bring it up in that, that conversation. But people would look at the Leviticus passages, they would look at uh, this passage in Romans and the, the passages we'll get into next, and say, well, well yeah, but, but that's referring to uh, same-sex interactions that were uh, exploitative. Right. You know, I mean, there was a, there was a yeah. practice, in, you know, like in, in Greek and Roman culture uh, called pederasty, Mm -hmm. Right, where like a, a man would have sex with like a teenage boy or mm -hmm. uh, you know like a young slave, yeah. uh, and there were these practices that, that well documented. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, this is this is a real thing that happened. Yes, um, and people who would have an, a, a kind of an affirming view that would say, well, yeah, hey, if if I'm in a uh, faithful monogamous you know same sex relationship, that isn't what Scripture was talking mm -hmm. about. Um, but again, the issue there is Scripture doesn't say, hey, these are... As long as you have permission, right? and as long as it's two people who agree, then it's okay. It doesn't say that. Right. And, and, yeah. and there have been some people, and again, I, and if I misrepresent Matthew Vines uh, and you read through that book, or if I reread through it, um, I'm sorry if I misrepresent. You know, but, but he would say, well, again, like if, it's, if it's committed, it's, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you're having to force that onto the scripture because it doesn't say that. Right. It doesn't, and in fact, uh, in uh, Preston Sprinkle, you know, he has a pastoral paper and he talks through like, he does like 15 
objections and responses mm -hmm. you know, to a kind of Great a biblical article. sexual ethic. Again, yeah. centerforfaith.com. Uh, you can go find those pastoral papers there. Um, but yeah, when, when you look at this, right, he actually says there's a, there's, another, there's a specific word in Greek for pederasty. Mm -hmm. That is not used in these, these passages that we're, that we're looking at. Right? So, so to say, oh, well, this only meant this, that is, that is loading a whole lot into here. Whereas, I mean, these at face value come across as a blanket statement mm -hmm. about same-sex activity. Mm -hmm. Like, sexual activity. Don't do it. Hey, you know, man with a man, woman with a woman, that's outside of, of God's original intention. That's outside of God's design for human sexuality. So yeah, we don't really have a, mm -hmm. an out. Again, and, and we, could go, we could go a long time talking about that. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we're just, we're just trying to kind of whet your appetite uh, and give you some resources, which again, centerforfaith.com, Sam Alberry is God Anti-Gay, Kevin DeYoung, what does the Bible really say about homosexuality, Preston Sprinkle, the people to be loved, and then again, I did the affirming side, with Matthew Vines, uh, God and the Gay Christian, uh, if you want to check those out. All right. Anything else on the Romans one? No. Uh, shall we jump to 1 Corinthians? Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6. Nine you got and it? Ten. Yep. 9 and 10. All right. You want to read that for us? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. All right, I got to read it in the New Living Translation, in which they're actually, you know, so in the last episode we talked about Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. So that's where we actually see kind of the, the, mm -hmm. the church culture, not, not church culture, mm -hmm. or anything, but just the, the terminology, right? I, a little bit of a rabbit trail, yeah. right? Uh, I've heard people on the affirming side say, hey, like the word homosexual never even showed up in scripture until, you know, a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's not what scripture's talking about. It's like, well, yeah, but was that word in the culture at large? Right. <laughs> you know, again, right. uh, language is an ever evolving thing. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, that that specific word might not have shown up until a hundred years ago, that doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, it's just a new word to define something that had already existed. Right. Yeah. Ten years Historically. ago. Ten years ago, nobody would have had any idea what yeet means. Thankfully. I still don't know what yeet no. means. <laughs> I asked my kids and they're like, it's yeet, Dad. Yeet is yeet. Okay. Right? I'm like, that's Whoa. that's a really bad argument. Right. Uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so here here you see, you know, that that word sodomite. Mm -hmm. Right? Because at, at that point in time, right, that was the terminology that was brought to the table. And mm -hmm. as, as language evolves, we reflect that. We don't change the meaning of Scripture, right. but we reflect, uh, you know, the evolution of language in Scripture. You know, again, same reason why I don't, I don't do my quiet times in, in King James or, or something like that, because that's mm -hmm. not wording that is familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, a little bit of a, no. little bit of a tangent there. No, no. So I'll read... Uh, I'll be interested to see how your translation parses out the two terms that this does, homosexuals nor sodomites. Yeah, which I'm interested to see what yours says. I'll have to pull says up. Um, sorry, I'm getting... Original language here? Yeah. If you want, you want to get it on Go ahead. while I'm reading. Yeah, yeah, uh, I got it. Got the app. So 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10 says, Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or commit adultery, or are male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or are abusive, or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom of God. 
I'm going to read verse 11. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed. This gets into what you talked about mm -hmm. in the last episode, right? The, mm -hmm. the freedom mm -hmm. in Jesus, right? He's saying, hey, this is the way some of you once were. Uh, now you were cleansed. You were made holy. You were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God, which is exactly what we talked about uh, in the last episode, um, which if you missed that, you can go back uh, and, and catch that. Did you find what our... Uh, because here, it would be, uh, I'm guessing it's the, the male prostitutes. It is. Here. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's the word um, malakos. Uh, malakos, uh, it means to be effeminate or soft. A catamite. So, so probably, I mean, in, in a sense, just based on that word, not, not like a male prostitute in the sense that like, the ladies are coming, but like right. you're, you're a man who prostitutes yourself out. A gay to prostitute. Other, to other right. men. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, is this passive? The other, the other oh. word is arsenoikos, which literally means a sodomite, an abuser of self with mankind. So it, it specifically speaks of the act. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, question number one, is this text relevant to a conversation about same-sex activity? Yes. It is. In yeah. addition to being relevant to a lot of other conversations. Yeah, pay attention right? to this list. <laughs> like, the, and that's, you know, we hit on that a little bit too, right? Yeah. Like, we've elevated it, like, oh, yep, look it, it says same-sex activity is wrong. Uh, yes, but it also says that being greedy mm -hmm. and thieving, uh, drunkards, right? All of these are on the list of mm -hmm. people who won't inherit the kingdom of God. So let's, uh, let's broaden our perspective a little bit here and not you know, hyper-focus on one of those things. Well, two, technically. Mm -hmm. two, two different aspects of, of same-sex uh, activity. Um, yeah, so you might not be in a same-sex relationship, but maybe you're greedy or a drunkard or an idolater. Or you're or, living in sin, you're living uh, with your girlfriend or your boyfriend in a heterosexual relationship. God calls that fornication. Yes. That is not God's best for you. God uh, desires for sexual activity to be between one man and one woman in the covenant of marriage. Yes. And so this text uh, identifies that in the same way. Or, or a covetous person, someone who covets, like, I want Josh's blue shirt. You know, living constantly with that impulse to want what others have. That's like American culture, mm -hmm. you know. Covetousness is, is what American branding and marketing is built on. Greed and, and wanting the, the bigger house and whatever. Um, so there's, there's a lot of dangerous things here that we need to pay attention to. Don't, don't pigeonhole and be myopic. Which, I mean, it's Galatians or Colossians, I don't remember which one right off the top of my head. But I mean, Paul says that greed is idolatry. Galatians like, 6, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, so you're, you're, you're elevating yourself, the things that I want, mm -hmm. that becomes what you worship. I mean, so yeah, this is yeah. a... There's more to idolatry than a little golden statue yeah. that you bow down to. There's a lot more to it. Yeah, which our culture ignores a lot of yeah. because we think, yeah. I'm not bound down. I'm not you know, doing any sacrifices. I don't uh, have any idols in my house. Yeah, it's it's a much uh, deeper issue mm -hmm. than that. So, uh, but yes, yeah, so this would be a, a relevant uh, passage to bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And again, this is one just as we talked about with Romans. It doesn't really give us the the out to say, well, that doesn't include right. You know, faithful monogamous relationships. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't give us the option of excluding that. Again, these are these are more more blanket statements. Uh, and now, you know, I think Matthew Vines comes to the table. And here's here's one of the things that makes this a little bit difficult is you'll find you can find a scholar that says <laughs> just about yeah. anything. Um, you know, because he yeah. cites some some scholars that say, well, in the ancient world, there weren't, you know, you know faithful monogamous. Mm -hmm. Same sex. There was only exploitive. Right. There was only exploitive, you know, uh, same sex encounters. Um, but there's lots of other scholarship that would say no. Like there were, <laughs> there yeah. were plenty of uh, yeah. of non, you know, you know exploitative um, same sex relationships. So we don't have the option to just say, well, it doesn't include those. Right. Because again, this is more of a, a 
blanket statement. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what else to say on that one. Mm -hmm. You got anything else? No. No. All right. And the final passage we're going to talk about is in First Timothy. As we turn to First Timothy. I'll go first with my NLT right here, okay. if I can find it, unless you beat me there. And then, 1 Timothy 1, 9 through 10. For the law was not intended for people who do what is right. It is for people who are lawless and rebellious, who are ungodly and sinful, who consider nothing sacred and defile what is holy, who kill their father or mother or commit other murders, the law is for people who are sexually immoral, which again, that is a huge blanket statement that mm -hmm. includes you know, All any, any sex outside mm -hmm. of marriage. Yeah. Um, uh, people who are sexually immoral or who practice homosexuality or are slave traders, liars, promise breakers, or who do anything else that contradicts the wholesome teaching that comes from the glorious good news entrusted to me by our blessed God. So I actually went through verse 11 there. Sorry, I, I said verse 10 at the front end. And that was incorrect. So, all right, what do you got? Uh, knowing this, the, the law is not made for a righteous person, but for the lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for sinners, for the unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there is any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. I find it amazing. This just stood out to me in both texts that we read. Notice that Paul, in both of these texts, he identifies fornication, which is this blanket for all sexual activity that is outside of God's plan, including homosexuality. Mm -hmm. And in my text, it said sodomites. But yet in both cases, he also identifies, independently of that blanket statement of fornication, specific acts of, of gay sex particularly specific acts. So it's almost as if the text is saying, don't allow for confusion that if it is monogamous, right. if it is in marriage, covenantal marriage, you can't read that from this text. Right, because that is one of the objections. It There's, is. Again, like kind mm -hmm. of that same, that same argument that they would go back to and say, well, it, that doesn't mean, right. again, you, you've got you've to force kind of your own Stretch view it. on scripture to, to make it not, mean that mm -hmm. and and here uh, that's a fantastic point right like you've got the blanket statement but then you've got kind of the provision and Paul I love the way Paul works mm -hmm. right Paul writes he, he's like a lawyer well yeah. I mean and he was I mean he's a Pharisee I he mean he was. was he was a man of the law right and and he writes anticipating objections yeah he's like well you might say <laughs> right he's like I'm gonna deal with that I'm right. gonna take care of that yeah. uh, objection uh, right here. And why would he do that? Because God, writing through Paul, wants to make sure that we're loved and protected. That's yes. what the Word of God is for. The commandments of God are His loving instructions. They're for our good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Now, again, we could have done a huge diet. We could probably could have, <laughs> like, with the material that's out there, we could have done an episode on each of these passages. Just marriage. We don't have the bandwidth for that. Well, yeah, I mean, and that would be a whole other, quite frankly, that's a whole other topic. Because, you know, I mean, several years ago here, the big debate, you know, in, in the United States was, well, should we allow same-sex marriage? You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the biblical arguments is, like, marriage, by definition, <laughs> is a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. it's, not that, it's not that we don't want, you know, gay couples to have access to, you know, health insurance yes. or, or anything like that. Right. It's... it's it's looking at what does God say marriage actually is. And why does he say it? And why does he say that? Yeah. Uh, and, and are two men or two women capable of meeting the criteria for marriage? Mm -hmm. It isn't that we don't want people to have health insurance or right. you know, you know, right. a break on their taxes kind of thing. Yeah. You know, that isn't well, I mean, God even, God even gives us a really good instruction on heterosexual marriage. He says, if I'm a follower of Jesus, he encourages me, not to marry in covenantal marriage someone who doesn't follow Jesus. Mm. So there's instruction, you know, the whole way that defines God's best plan for marriage. Yep. Um, and I personally, that was the real uh, foundation and root that I've, I've learned from Dr. Preston Sprinkle. He builds his entire, we'll call it thesis 
or thoughts or co- on the conversation, uh, LGBTQ plus conversation, from the biblical understanding of what marriage is. And I think that's crucial. Mm-hmm. It's crucial. Yeah. Again, he does a really good job walking yeah. that, that line. And we're hoping, we're not going to make any promises. <laughs> We're trying to get Preston on this podcast. He's a colleague of Sam Alberry, and we've been in conversation with him. So join us in praying that the wisdom that God has imparted, really pray, listeners, viewers, pray that, that God would make a, a moment in time and schedule for, for Preston to join us because Josh and I know, the rest of the staff at Radiant Life know, we've grown from his ministry. Yeah. We're big fans. We keep his books. I keep his books in stacks in my in my desk to give out to help people wade through this conversation far better than I could help them. So pray that God would open a door for us to yeah. talk with him. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. I do want to uh, real briefly. I want to hit on the idea of a, a you know sometimes people look at scripture and and this idea of um, same sex activity and they would apply what what is sometimes called a trajectory ethic. Right? They would say, well, well, if you look at the Old Testament, you look at the New Testament, uh, there's, this, there's this upward movement. Right? You, you read in the, in the Old Testament about uh, slavery, mm-hmm. and then you read in the New Testament about slavery, and there's, there's this movement away from structure. I don't, that's maybe right. not the right way to say it. And we know slavery is complete wickedness. Right. So it's the worst. And, and I will yeah. say, like, and, and this is where, unfortunately, the church has done a, a crappy job in the past. Mm-hmm. Like they would say, oh, well, no, look, the scripture said, so first and foremost, slavery was, in, you know, in, in scripture, yeah, we're not, we're not going to talk. Not first of all, the same. First, as and, first the, and foremost, it was yeah. not, a, not as an apples to apples. You actually read through, no. uh, like, uh, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, like, there are a lot of protections put in place. Oh. Uh, and, and Israel, like, it's usually talking yeah. about, like, hey, if you have, a fellow Israelite, like yeah. they can't pay a debt yeah. and they become your slave. They come and work at your house. They come and work at your house. To work off the debt that they owe you. It's not slavery like going in ships to another country right. and captive, taking people captive from their homeland, bringing them to another country and forcing them to labor, raping them. Yeah, and, the and, and, all, and all being race based, right? All I mean, being like, like that wickedness. is absolute wicked. Yes. It's a sin, it's and, and it's a sin, you know, that we're still experiencing um, the effects of in culture. Whole other conversation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But, but they would say, well, hey, you look at the Older Testament, and that's, that's you know, maybe a little bit more antiquated, permissive, right? Yeah. Well, in the Newer Testament, you see a move away from that. Well, hey, right. 2,000 years removed from Paul, right. like, we're even further, right? Like, we, yeah. we're evolving. We know, we're, you know, we're changing, we're doing better, right? Yeah. But they started us on this trajectory, you know out of slavery, yeah. and so now we, we are where we are today. Um, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> Josh and I came to this, this very beautiful uh, lobby, family center here, and this morning there was a, a puddle of water from our, bo- our new roof, really discouraged by it, but it reminded us, is, is the second law of thermodynamics? Everything goes from order to disorder. That's right. <laughs> like my grass doesn't get shorter at my house has to be mowed. How cool like, would that be though? Metal doesn't not rust, it gets more rusty. So the trajectory idea of things going from bad to good, it's not real. Well, Science, the world proves it. And here's where- uh, It's degrading. Because you know, one of the other issues that people would talk about a trajectory ethic is uh, the role of women. Right, mm-hmm. you, you look at the Old Testament yeah. and you're like, holy cow, those guys yeah. were like a bunch of patriarchal, although even that is, we're misinterpretation. We're imposing, we're imposing our what we think is our enlightened, evolved uh, understanding of things right. on an ancient, you know, mm-hmm. cultural system. Uh, they weren't nearly as upset about it as mm-hmm. what we seem to be. But anyways, they would say, "Hey, look at very restrictive of women in the Old Testament." Uh, you see movement. I mean, Jesus himself was super uh, like affirming of women. He like, was the uh, the greatest <laughs> feminist. In the history of mankind, he did more to liberate women from oppressive culture than anyone had ever done. He, he said and taught things that were in such opposition to culture, not biblical commandments. Right. It, it's astounding. Yeah. And Paul tried really hard to match him in that, <laughs> in, in elevating the status of women. Yes. So people would say Old Testament restrictive, New Testament much less restrictive, and now here we are, evolved and enlightened in 2021. Uh, 
Right. And we obviously know the better. So it's that trajectory idea. Uh, some people would apply that same idea to sexuality. They would say, well, hey, you know, restrictive uh, Leviticus, like you're all down mm -hmm. on it, right? Uh, Paul talks about it, you know, but, but maybe the, he wasn't talking about stoning anybody. Right. You know, so he's loosening it up, and here we are 2,000 years later. Right. Clearly, we've arrived at the pinnacle mm -hmm. of our understanding of sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. The problem with that, again, we talked about Leviticus. We talked about this idea of moral law, uh, you know, sacrificial or, or like... Judicial. You know, judicial. Like you've got these different categories of law. If there's a, if there's a trajectory ethic when Jesus spoke into it, mm -hmm. right? Anytime Jesus changed the understanding of a, of a moral law, <laughs> it didn't become looser. It became tighter. He says, Unpack that more. He says, you've yeah. heard it said, yeah. don't murder. Right? This, this is moral law, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about this in the, in the last mm -hmm. episode. Like, don't kill people. Good law. That is wrong. Right? Killing people, bad. Don't do it. He says, you said, you think that's the standard, right? Out here, don't kill people. If you don't kill people, you're good. You're following the law. Jesus says, I tell you. <laughs> but I say to if, you. If, if you. If you call your brother, you know, a fool, like. With angry intent. With angry, like, you're in danger of hell. I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. He says, you've heard it said. Like, don't commit adultery. And everyone is sitting there thinking, check, haven't slept with anyone who isn't my wife, I'm good. Yeah. He says, but I tell you, if you look lustfully at a woman, wow. you've committed adultery with her in your heart. So where we see Jesus speak mm -hmm. into, in a sense, changing moral law. He's change, fully preaching it. Like, right, like his ethic doesn't get less restrictive, it gets <laughs> more restrictive. Yeah. So you've got to be really careful there too. Uh, and then real quick, because we're, we're, yeah. we're getting close to the, our timeline. We're a little bit over our timeline here. Um, some people would just say, well, Jesus never speaks about same-sex activity, mm -hmm. so he must have been okay with it. That's a huge reading your view into this, because here's the culture Jesus operated in. He was in a first-century Jewish culture. Right. He didn't have to say anything about it. Because right. they were functioning on that Leviticus 18.22 and Leviticus 20.13 passages. Mm -hmm. Like, there would have been no reason for him to yeah. specifically say, uh, hey, you know, don't do this, right. because it would have been widely accepted in his mm -hmm. culture. Now, not the, not the Greek and Roman cultures. Yeah, but Hellenists I mean, were different. Right, I mean, but, but Jesus was a Jew, and, mm -hmm. and he spent a lot of his time with Jewish people. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the culture he functioned in there would have been no reason mm -hmm. for him to address that because they would have known what the law said and they wouldn't have, yeah. you know, there wouldn't have been any question. Again, where we see him address the law is to get tighter. Uh, divorce, yeah. right? He says, hey, Moses lets you get divorced for pretty much any reason. Yeah, you, know, you don't like her, get you divorced. You burnt your toast. Uh, Jesus, uh, he, he makes that tighter. He yeah. says, nope. He says, the only reason he did that was because you guys were stubborn. You had hard hearts. Uh, a bunch of stiff-necked punks. Uh, so he so he made it harder. Yeah. So there there's like one that does actually apply in the in the marriage context. Yeah. And there are biblical reasons for divorce that Jesus does unpack. Yes. But yes. But it wasn't what the culture was saying. Right. Because they were like, hey, whatever. You you know, you wanted a brunette and she's blonde. Like, cool. There you go. New model. Trade uh, her in. Yes. Uh, Jesus did away with that, which was actually also a one of the ways he elevated women. Yes. Right? Like he, he, he changed he changed the, yes. the the rules of the game. So yeah. all right. But hey, we're at our time. Again, want to encourage you guys, go check out resources. Yep. Uh, we make all these references to scripture and we even read them, but don't take our word for it. Get yeah. out your Bible. Uh, read the passages that we read, read the ones around it. Um, and and do your research. Okay. Examine this from all sides. You want yeah. to close this out? Yeah, this is episode 70 of Radiant Reflections. Um, hopefully you've been encouraged. Hopefully you've gotten some clarity. If you have any more questions about what we talked about, episode 69 or 70, um, feel free to email uh, us at podcast at radiantlife.church. And again, we say this at the close of every episode, but we really want you to, to I want to lean in here and say to you, uh, if you would like this podcast, yes, 
If you would share this podcast, whether uh, if you're watching on YouTube, share it uh, uh, to Facebook. If you're listening, you can share this to Facebook, uh, uh, Twitter. And then also go to whatever platform you use. I use a platform called Overcast. I know if you're an iPhone user, you might use iTunes, um, uh, the podcast app. Uh, you may use uh, Podbean. There's plenty of them. Go to those platforms and, and just type out your thoughts about the podcast. We'd love a five-star review. All these reviews and stars and all that stuff on the platforms helps more people learn about Radiant Reflections um, and it helps us grow in, in the areas and ways that we can impact the world for Christ, which is the goal of, of Radiant Reflections. So like, share, and definitely subscribe. Maybe you're watching or listening to this podcast and someone, you found it on Facebook or you found it on YouTube or, or someone shared an audio link with you from the podcast. I only listen to the podcast that I subscribe to, right? And when someone shares something with me, then I'm like, oh man, I find this interesting. That's how I got started with Preston Sprinkle. Someone shared an article, uh, a podcast with me. I listened to one episode. I went back to the very beginning of everything the guy has ever said, and I listened to every episode because I was so engaged. So subscribe to this podcast, and yeah, God bless you, and uh, we'll see you next time.